Hey there everybody, uh, it's Jeff again here. We're gonna go through another live coding session today. But um, first I wanna direct your attention to this uh, Humble Engine project. This is one of the um, capstones that is being worked on, or at least the game um, Final Frontier, you can see their channel is Final Frontier, is being made with this Humble Engine. Um, in sort of the first half of their capstone they spent putting this engine together um, and so far as I've seen they've done wonderful work and they probably have one of the most full featured engines that I have seen in uh, in the history of the Humber program as I have seen it. It's a team of four working on this and they've done some really excellent stuff. Um, why don't I play the video first and we'll continue on after that. Whoa, a video inside a YouTube video. So this is just a short demo of what it is that their engine can do. And I want you to not underestimate what's going on in here. Um, there is some really excellent lighting work, model loading, particle effects. Um, you can see a selection indicator around here. Um, you can see that they've got the ability to like click 3D objects in the world. Um, you can see this character here animating. That means that they're using a skinned mesh renderer to be able to like display animations. Um, this is all stuff that's done from scratch. Never mind the fact that they seem to have a UI framework in place here. Like there's a lot that the, these uh, these guys. I shouldn't say these guys. Um, it's uh, a team of four and there's a couple girls and a couple guys. They've done some really excellent work. Um, and I want to remind everybody that they have a game engine um, sort of seminar thing that they're doing in the mornings, 9 a.m. on both Mondays and Fridays. I don't think I'm going to watch this video. Um, so I wanted to bring that up because this week we're going to delve into something that finally starts to touch on making animated, like, real looking game stuff. Finally, for the first time, we're going to delve into what we can build ourselves um, to do a physics simulation for assignment three um, that is going to be uh, dealing with gravitational effects. So like a planet orbiting a star is, is basically going to be the, the central thing here. But so, I mean, take pride in the fact that you are now at the point where you have the necessary skills to be able to, with SDL's help, put together a game from scratch in C++. So not Unity where everything's mostly working and you just kind of add things. You can actually build it up from the base pieces yourself. And this is not very different than working on a game engine. In fact, we're going to cover some concepts that you will definitely see later in your game engines course and that you would definitely run into if you went to those sessions. So I definitely advise going and being able to sort of talk to your upperclassmen about their experiences with that and any of the technology that they're using there. Um, and, you know, getting to know the basics of how we come at this kind of problem. But, um, of course, that's going to be where I start too. Mission number one, let's use SDL to get a window on the screen displaying something, anything. Let's just get a window. That's, that's a good start, right? That's like kind of the hello world of making a Windows application, I think. So before uh, I get too far along, I am going to... Uh, just make a new project in Visual Studio. I'm just going to put it into my very messy desktop. Um, so let's make a new project. I'm just going to make an empty C++ project and I'll start by sort of uh, putting the bits and pieces together here and I probably need to open another project as well so that I know what's going on while we go through this. Uh, come computer, we can do this. You've got the power. Um, I should also make note that um, I will be leaning 
to some degree on Lazy Foo's tutorials. Uh, as I mentioned to many of you, this was sort of my crash course in uh, getting started uh, with, with SDL. And despite that it's lesson 35, um, in fact, what we're going to build is, is going to lean pretty heavily on this uh, Lazy Foo um, window events tutorial, which is their tutorial 35. Don't worry, I try to keep things somewhat reasonable, and I think with the help of some of the stuff that Scott has shown you, uh, you'll probably feel pretty safe. So, let's, uh, yeah, let's call this a three demo. That sounds fine. Just an empty C++ project. Um, if you make it an empty project as opposed to a console project, you have to set a couple of things, but... Um, that's not too big of a problem. Um, we'll have to make a main and stuff. It just saves us having to remove things such as the um, pre-compiled header and um, that STDA FX and you know all those fun things. Um, so uh, let me see what was I gonna dig up. Right, I want to go to my desktop and I have a couple files to to move around. Um, so, my A3 demo project is one folder that I definitely want to open up. So, I'm actually going to open up two of these windows here. So, uh, I have a completed um, version of this that I am going to be sort of working from here. And I want you to recognize these two folders in here. So, I've downloaded SDL2, uh, 2.0.5, and I have the SDL image add-on. 2.0.1. So I have downloaded both of these from SDL's website. Um, there are links in the uh, Blackboard um, game dev resources for both of these things if you need to get them yourself. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these things into my solution folders. So by in A3 demo, what we need, we need these files and I'm going to show you how to link into these uh, even though LazyFoo has a tutorial on this, I think it's worth putting it to video. So um, make sure that these go into your solution folder. I'm, I'm going to paste them in here. Now, you can put these anywhere on your machine, but the reason that I put them into my solution folder, and I do this every time I create an SDL project, is that this way, if I need to, I can simply zip up my whole solution folder and any of the like path linkages that my that I have in my project to these files, uh, I can get them to be entirely portable. Like they'll work on someone else's machine because I'm going to copy along all of the important files with them. So that's going to be that's a that's a pretty good thing to make note of. And I'm going to explain this a tiny little bit more later, but. Um, Another thing that you want to do is to go into, um, first of all, let's just go into the SDL2 folder and we'll open up its lib folder and x86. And note that there is SDL2.dll in here. We need to copy this into our project folder. So A A3 demo, the folder inside the solution folder. So if we're looking at the solution file right now, there is A3 demo as a folder in there. This will take us into the project. And so of course you'll see the VX proj file. So I wanna copy my sdl2.dll in here because this file needs to be in this place in order for us to link to this correctly um, later on. So I'm gonna make sure that that's in place here and then I need to go back and I need to do something very similar with SDL2 image. So I'm going to open up the image library and I'm going to go into lib. I'm going to go to x86 and there's a lot of DLLs here. You'll notice that there's SDL2 image.dll and that's the one that we really need. But for SDL2 image.dll to do what it does, it also needs to bring along with it all of these other DLLs. Um, so you could say that this libjpeg, libping, libtiff, libwebp, uh, zlib, these are all dependencies of SDL2 image. So they need to come along as well. And we're going to do just the same thing here. We're going to go to A3 demo, 
um, oh, pardon me, we're not pasting them in here. We want to go into the second A3 demo folder, so our project folder, and we're going to paste those files in here too. So this is what we've got right now to begin with. We have all these DLL files that are sort of holding this thing together. Um, and now I'm going to go and I'm going to do the slightly confusing looking part. Um, I'm going to go into A3 demo properties. So I know configuring C++ projects is nobody's favorite thing, but I promise you it gets easier. Eventually you get used to the things that you really need to look for and what really needs to happen. So usually when you're setting up a C++ project to use some other library as a dependency, so in this case we're using SDL as a library, our project is going to be dependent upon it, so it is a dependency of our project, or so we say. Um, so when you do this, you usually have to click on this VC++ directories thing on the side here, and there's usually two of these that are very important to this process library or include directories and library directories um, sometimes you end up having some other things in here as well but these tend to be the big hitters that you are modifying most often and so you you look over into here and you see like holy crap what is all of this mess over here well okay so it's not as bad as it looks so if you just click on this down here over here you can go to edit and so basically what it wants from you are paths what include directories means is that this is where it will look for additional c++ files that it's going to use to inform how intellisense works and determine how to link your project now so we're going to be looking to this first of all sdl2-205 right we want to get things in there and well you'll note that this has an include folder this is a very common naming pattern that you'll see include unsurprisingly usually means this is the folder that you want to link to as your include folder so now I'm just gonna copy and paste this in Windows but I want you to pay attention to something here notice that when I copy and paste this path I'm getting this C users, J rows, desktop, like whatever, like this is a very specific path to my computer. And I don't want this if I want to be able to make this thing portable. I want to do something different with this so that it makes sure that it's always looking in the right place for these files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this in, but um, there are a whole bunch of macros in here that I can use. I'm going to open this up and you'll notice that there's just macros streaming down the side here. Basically what it's saying is for example there are variables defined on my machine. Let's look for one that's especially useful for us today. Um, Solutioner, that's a good one. So if I look up dollar sign parenthesis solution der close parenthesis that will sub in whatever folder my solution happens to be in on the target machine. If it wasn't on my desktop, this would automatically reconfigure to wherever that happens to be. Right? So that's that's um that's pretty good. Um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconfigure this. So I'm going to say solution dir and I'm going to get rid of that slash. Uh notice you have to be careful sometimes with slashes using these macros. You'll notice that solution dir does in fact end with a slash. So if I put a slash in here at the beginning, that would be two slashes and that will cause it to break. But now if you look at this evaluated value here, look at that. So that's the path to this, this thing in a three demo on my computer, right? Like that's pretty, that looks pretty solid. Okay. So it, at least it gives you like a confirmation that this looks to be correct. Because um, when you get these wrong, sometimes it can, like, give you a little bit of trouble thinking about that. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Actually, there's two paths that I want to include here. Because, of course, the second one is for images, right? So I want to have my image include, which only includes this one uh, SDL image.h, but nonetheless, it's important. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing here where I put on solution dir 
I'm pretty sure capitalization matters there, so um, stick with that. And so again, if you double check your evaluated, um, so this looks to me to be the correct path to the right to the right thing, right? Um, and you know what? Let's totally confirm that. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's definitely the same path. Great. And that's for SDL two. And if I were to do so for um, image, that looks correct to me. Okay, good. All right, so always keep an eye on the details here. Realize that like you want it, these things have to be character accurate. Like they can't be off at all or they will break. So always check your evaluated uh, evaluated values for these things. It will help you make sure that it, you get everything right and you know everything goes smoothly. So your library directories now demand that you go to where those DLLs were. Remember where we fished out for, for these DLLs in here? Oh, I'm in the image folder. Let me, um, actually, I can close this one now. Let's just work in the A3 demo folder. That's confusing. Uh, so let's do SDL, uh, the main SDL first. So we want to go into SDL2205 lib x86 because this is where our libs live. So these are code files, compiled code files um, that it is going to use to access the compiled SDL classes. Um, and this DLL is also important, but we already copied that into the right place. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't just look DLLs up in this folder, but that, that'd be great, but that's not how it works. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to provide this path and guess what? We're going to use that solution dir thing again. So I'm going to take this chunk off the beginning. So I'm going to set that solution dir and if we look at the evaluated value, um, what do we get? C users, J rows, desktop, A3 demo, SDL2, lib, x86. Users J rows desktop A3 demo SDL2 lib x86 looks pretty good to me. Um, so then I have to do one more. Oops, where I am getting SDL2 image. Again, we go into lib x86, and sure enough, SDL2 image dot lib lives in here. And boom, same deal. Solution dir. So I'm basically I just really want to reinforce that that being able to use macros such as solution dir and um, sometimes also um, I think project project dir is is also pretty useful if you're sort of making something that has to be specific to where this particular project goes. Remember a solution can hold several projects, so sometimes that matters. But I want to really reinforce this is super important for you to be able to package up your code and submit it especially to teachers for grading because if you submit something with paths that link directly to your drive I guarantee you that your code will break for your teacher and sometimes that means I can't grade this sorry you get like a zero or I'll grade you on whatever I can grade but there's not much here so sorry um, so you know watch out for that um, and lastly, we have to go to this linker input. Um, so this is the last, uh, the last area that we need to look into in order to do these, these things here. And we need to then edit these additional dependencies. Um, and this is going to sound redundant, but we do actually need to put the names of the lib files that we want to be loaded in here. Now, for some reason, this one lets us just edit mul like on multiple lines. Um, and that's just how this one works. Uh, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make sure to get all these files. So I have sdl2.lib and I think it's sdl2 underscore main.lib. I think that's right. Not underscore, just sdl main. We don't need sdl test. Um, so what we need is sdl2.lib, sdl2main, sdl2image.lib. 
What that's going to do is it's going to tell the project that we need to load these lib files from our lib addresses that we, that we specified before. And lastly, uh, a thing that I'm going to do because I set this as an empty project is that I'm going to go to linker system and I'm going to set this to console. This is not super important, um, but um, it can be it can be useful. It helps that it sort of makes it so that our application is going to act like a console application from this point on. So my last thing to do, just as uh, getting up and started, is I'm going to create my main.cpp. And I am going to give myself a main function. I'm going to start off with the very, very simplest thing that I possibly can. Um, I'm going to just have it return zero and hopefully um, hopefully this at least runs and doesn't like light on fire. That's that's a that's a good goal. All right, awesome. Uh, build succeeded. How we doing here? Quick flash of a window and it stops. Okay, well that's something, right? Okay. Um before I go too much further, I just want to open up this other project. I'm going to move this over here, you know. I would have opened this in advance if I had a thought of it, but um, that's how it is. And uh, I guess you're getting a minor glimpse at how the sausage is made, I guess. Um, all right, so great. Uh, so we have a project with SDL in it, and it runs and flashes a console window and stops. Well, that isn't really what we were going to do today, is it? We're trying to do something a little bit more uh, advanced than that. But uh, that's an important stage of this, is just getting through being able to set your project up in the way that you need it to, um, and preferably, portably, so that when you need to submit things for grading, that uh, that's all there. Uh, that's super important that you do that because it makes it way, way more work for me if I have to go through and change your project dependencies uh, and the, the folders that you link to in order to run your stuff. Please, please, please do this for me. It saves me so much work. Um, okay, so moving on. Uh, we want to make ourselves a class uh, that holds a window. Now, Scott's probably introduced you to some kind of window class already. Um, but so because of that, since you already have some introduction to that, I'm going to try and go through this a little bit quickly um, just to sort of um, get this out there. So I'm going to make a class called window. I'm going to pop that into existence. And um, I'm going to try and go through... Um, as much of this as I sort of can, uh, as quickly as I can. So I'm going to copy in a couple of chunks from my other project's window here, and we can have a quick discussion about what what things are all uh, all in here and what they're made of. Um, actually, yeah, let's. Um, so I copied a couple things in here, so you, see, you can see some, some red underlines here for things such as SDL event and string and this uint32. Um, that's just because I haven't put the proper include statements in. So if I put those include statements in, um, so you'll notice, so I had one include string, so obviously I need that for standard string. Um, I believe I also need that for uint32, or why would I need string for uint32? That's probably SDL. Uh, let's confirm that. If I take away SDL, does it actually, yeah, there we go. Um, okay, but this is a pretty ringing um, confirmation that SDL.h is in fact being loaded correctly because you can see that the types are lighting up and when I hover over them, I actually get like code hinting, right? So this is good news. This this shows us that SDL is being loaded correctly. All right, well, um, moving on from here, you'll notice that what I've got inside this window class is a constructor, a destructor, and a few functions. Um, so I have a clear function and a draw function. 
these two things go together. Uh, you'll see that they're marked const so that they don't do anything to change the window. And what these things are responsible for is clear wipes the screen. Whatever was drawn on the window is just wiped clean, overwritten by, I think, plain white. Draw, on the other hand, takes whatever has been rendered into the, the like, pixel buffer for the window so far and draws it to the window. So we're going to be using these in order to sort of like manage what what gets drawn and um, you know how the scene looks. Free is mostly used by the destructor. Free is responsible for cleaning up after the window um, needs to be have have uh, some data released. I haven't included any of the properties or the fields that this window or has yet, and I'm going to do that in a moment. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, in it, I'm skipping handle event just briefly. We're going to talk about that after I get some more things in here. And in it uh, is just to initialize. You call this when you want to start the window up. Um, and so this does things like setting the title that shows up up here like any window in windows for example well, chrome isn't a good example um yeah like a window here like obviously this has a title um so that shows up in the uh the title bar the width and height of the window in pixels whether it should start up minimized whether it should start full screen things like this are not super essential for if you're making your own window class but definitely you want these first three things, or at least definitely the width and the height. Lastly, this handle event function is going to be all about handling SDL events that happen. This means when you click the X to close this window, that's an event. If you don't handle it, the window doesn't close. That's right, you have to code the basic behavior that tells the application to quit when you hit X. That's a real problem that we actually have to deal with. Um, but then there's lots of other things. There's such like there's window resize events that are triggered by when you grab these things and move them around. There's moving the window around. There's clicking on the window. There's letting go of the window. There's all kinds of events um, that that can be handled. And I'm going to very briefly show you a thing or two about how those things work. So um, before we dive into how um, these functions work. I'm going to talk briefly about the things that go inside uh, a window, what data it needs to have. First of all, I'm holding an SDL window pointer. So this window that I am creating is a wrapper. It's what we call a wrapper class. You've probably heard this term thrown around. Um, so what we're doing here is we are wrapping SDL's concept of a window with a class that allows us to interact with the window in the way that we want to use it. Um, so we are holding on to the SDL window because most of the things that we do in our functions are going to be interacting with this window object to, to either get information from it or set things on it or whatever else. Um, the second part of this that we are going to need is an SDL renderer pointer. Now an SDL renderer is basically the, the thing that's responsible for um, mashing together a pixel buffer, what, what you um, may call a screen buffer uh, or a frame buffer uh, in graphics class, which I guess you haven't had yet, but um, once you get there, yeah, the frame buffer is what you'll be talking about. The renderer allows you to render objects to the screen, but they don't just immediately show up. They go into a buffer in the renderer, and then when we call draw, what we're really do going to be doing is asking the renderer to draw out its contents to the window. That's what we're going for. So um, other than these, I have a couple more variables that uh, I'm just gonna sort of throw together here. Um, so there's a bunch of things that I just added, but none of them should be... So we've got height, we've got width, we've got title, uh, is full screen, is minimized. At some level, we've talked about basically all these things because these are the things that come in through init. 
And lastly, we have a couple of variables for whether the window has mouse focus or has keyboard focus, and we'll talk about that briefly when we hit this handle event function. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on uh, putting together uh, what this looks like internally in the CPP. I'm going to try to sort of keep that light if I can. Uh, because there are a lot of things to go over and I don't want this video to go too, too long. But I'm going to start off with um, the constructor and the destructor. That seems like a pretty good place to begin, if there's anywhere. So I'm going to throw these in. Um, so what I'm doing with this window here is I'm just going to, I've got a whole bunch of primitive variables, and remember, when you have primitives, you probably want to make sure that they get initialized to something, or they'll end up being weird values when things start up. Um, actually, I noticed in here, it's probably a good idea uh, that I set my renderer to null. It doesn't have to be, but um, it doesn't hurt. So. Renderer and window are both pointers, so I'm setting them to null, meaning this doesn't point at anything. Usually, we set pointers to null when they aren't pointing to anything specifically, so that we have a good way to check and say, okay, I know for sure that this pointer isn't assigned. Because if the pointer is some random value, you don't really know for sure whether it's pointing to an object or it's not. So the, it's a general practice that, that when a pointer is not being used that we set it to null. So, so that's what I'm doing there. I'm going to initialize the height and width to zero, and I'm going to initialize all these Boolean variables that I have to false. Um, yes, I said Boolean. Um, it's not Boolean, really. It's um, Bool is the guy's name that, that invented Boolean algebra. Um, so... We call it Boolean because that his name was, I think, James Bool, B-O-O-L-E. Yeah, so, you know, use that to impress your friends. You know, it's a really good way of impressing people. I should know. Uh, okay, so, of course, in our destructor, I'm calling Bree. Now, I talked about this before, is this is a function that we use to release resources from the window and just clean up after ourselves. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit in a moment. I kind of want to knock out... Um, actually, you know what? Let's do that next. Free is a good, reasonably good place to start, actually, weirdly. So, talking about free... Um, this sort of brings us to the resources that are important here. Uh, you know how I just talked about how um, when we set something to null, that usually is an indicator that it's not being used? Well, this is us leaning on that a little bit and using that fact. If window isn't null, that means that it must be set to something. And if it's set to something, then we want to destroy the window that it's set to. So. Our way of freeing resources is, hey, is window set to anything yet? Well, if it is, I want to make sure that the window at that address gets destroyed. Next thing, is renderer set to anything? If it is, I want SDL to destroy the resources for that renderer. I want to set my height and width back to zero, and I want to set these values back to false. So basically, we're just going through, we're cleaning up, um, and setting any variables, variables back to sort of defaults. Um, and you know what? Um, I'm just going to add these couple variables into this mix because uh, it would make sense that they be set to false as well for sure. So, okay. Um, so that's what we need to do to clean up after ourselves. But um, what do we do to get started? Getting started is um, kind of a bigger task here. So I'm going to try and go through this kind of piece by piece. There's a bunch of chunks here uh, to pay attention to. Now again, most of this is lifted from Lazy Foo's tutorial, tutorial so um, if this looks complicated to you, realize that it's doing some really good things to be able to handle errors. Uh, it's not too many lines, it's only about 20-ish lines. So uh, hopefully this doesn't look too complicated to anybody. So the first chunk of this that I'm going to sort of copy in here is this create window. Um, 
Oh, yeah. Sorry, one sec. I may have to include... Uh, yep. I need to include string stream because I like string streams a lot for error messages and stuff. Okay, so what's happening here is we're setting our pointer window to the result of calling the function SDL create window. I'm giving this SDL create window function a title, but it takes it in the form of, wow, that's hard to read, isn't it? But I want to point out, okay, so you see SDL window pointer, C declaration, SDL create window, const car pointer title. Car pointer, that is C speak for give me a string. But strings aren't quite the same thing. Strings have a function called C under, underscore string that returns a character pointer um, that represents the title. So that's what we're passing in there. We want to send the car pointer of this string into this. We are uh, okay so I believe this is for right it takes in an X and Y for the initial position of the window and I have chosen not to do anything in this class to represent this so I'm passing in this SDL window pause undefined um, constant that is defined by SDL. So basically this is just saying I don't care where the window is created on screen. I'm passing in my width, I'm passing in my height. You notice that these are uint32 um, and I'm just trying to check does this function expect no I'm just trying to use this uint32 type throughout really all this means is int but it's just guaranteeing that it's 32 bits. Don't worry about it too much. You don't really have to use it if you don't want to, but it makes me feel good. So, you know, we'll go with that. And then lastly, uh, it takes some flags. I am literally just borrowing exactly from LazyFoo here. What this is meaning is um, that this will allow the window to be resizable and this makes the window visible as opposed to invisible. Um, You'll notice that they use a bitwise or between these two things. Little bit complicated. Ask Scott about flags. Get him to tell you about flags. That, that will help you understand what's going on here. So now, this next line, we're checking if the window is null. So what's happening there is that if SDL create window fails to create the window for some reason, it will just set window to null. If window is null, we screwed up and we need to print an error out. Well, what went wrong? Thankfully, there's a function for that. SDL get error will ask SDL what the most recent error that happened was. So this way, we can build up a message about what went wrong and I am going to start using this syntax from time to time to throw exceptions. STD does in fact have an exception type and I'm passing in uh, this god awful looking thing. In this case we're going one step further. Remember when we did this we have title as a string and we need to get the C string out. Um, or actually can I just do this? I'm curious. Does that work? Nope. Um, so what I'm doing here is I've got a string stream and I need to get the string out of the string stream, so I'm calling str, the function, to get the string, and then I need to get the C style, like car star, uh, car pointer, out of the string. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of steps going on there that look kind of gross, um, but basically I'm just throwing an exception with this message. Um, because there are a couple of things that I haven't done that are in my copy of the code over here, I bet you when I paste a couple of things in right now, I am going to have some errors, but um, let's just see if I can massage those out of the code. Um, I'm, I will talk about this in one sec. gonna try and make that easy for myself but setting those probably has a couple of other effects 
Um, yeah, sure. Let's just say if is minimized, then call SDL minimize window. And if is full screen, then we'll do SDL set window full screen to true. Sounds good to me. Um, so basically all that's happening here is now that my height and width are, have been set by this init function, I want to make sure to hold on to those values. Um, I'm setting that the window has keyboard and mouse focus. Basically all I'm saying here is that when you start the application that it automatically becomes the front application in Windows, that it becomes the application that um, when you type keys on your keyboard that they that the keys are routed to this application um, by Windows that's basically what's happening here and of course if I asked for the if I asked to have um, a, to start up the window is minimized do that if I asked to start up the windows full screen do that um, and lastly I'm going to include uh, a little bit of stuff to set up the renderer because once we've gotten this far I have that renderer pointer that I need to fill in so I'm making a call to SDL create renderer to be able to do this um, just like with window it works the same way if create renderer fails for some reason it returns null and an error gets stored in SDL uh, it gets stored such that you can get it out with SDL get error. So I'm basically handling the error in exactly the same way that I was before. There's nothing changing here. Um, what this renderer is going to do is it's making a renderer for the window. Um, to be honest, I don't remember what this negative one represents. Um, I would just leave it as negative one. I haven't done anything to fool with that. And then lastly, this is a couple of flags. Uh, I would just copy these ones. You could probably fool around with this, but basically this means um, allow the renderer to use hardware acceleration and um, have the renderer use VSync so that it guarantees that you are rendering at 60 frames per second. If you remove VSync, your card will just render as fast as it can go. Um, so that's, that's basically all that's going to happen there. Um, some people have opinions about VSync. I don't really, but I know there's a lot of people who get really concerned about that when they're talking about like pro gaming things. So I don't know. I, I don't care. <laughs> um, personally. And lastly, I am just basically setting the renderer draw color to white just to guarantee that that's, that's sort of the default color that I'm working with. So why does this represent white? Um, well, this is an RGBA color, right? If you guys have ever dealt with color, um, in C++ land, usually color is represented as a series of bytes. And so a byte is 8 bits, right? And you can represent from the number 0 to 255 um, as a byte. We very often use hexadecimal to represent this. So you can see when I hover over FF, it's rep representing 255. So, um, of course, uh, if you're familiar with RGB color, um, if you're not, we can talk about that. But basically, like what this means is that if you have max red, max white, or max red, max green, max blue, those three things mix together to produce white and this last thing is for alpha so this specifies the transparency of the color and where zero is fully transparent and f is fully or ff is or 255 is fully opaque so we're saying draw in perfect opaque white that's what we're going for at the end here so this this init function is probably the most complicated function in this whole application um, so far. And I know there's a lot of pieces there, but I wanted to break this one down. 
There's a few steps to go through, but just follow my lead on this. Whatever you need to build into your own window, I suggest you try to follow a pattern a little bit like this to get something that works. Um, now, um, on the subject of rendering, uh, I'm going to drop in a couple more functions here, uh, and I'm going to put them in here because this is clear and this is draw. They're really simple, aren't they? Um, so all clear needs to do is call SDL render clear and tell the renderer, I want you to clear yourself. That's it. And SDL render present, that's not render present. It's not about gifts. That's not what's going on here. It's saying present the context, contents of the renderer's buffer. That's what's really happening here. So we're saying to the renderer, okay, I want you to present your contents to the window now, dump your buffer out. Awesome, there we go. That's that's what's going on here. So this, uh, this displays the contents of the renderer after we've drawn some things to it, to the window, and this clears, uh, clears the renderer so that we can start drawing um, from scratch as though it's a blank canvas. And so you'll see a couple of cases of where we're using this probably a little bit later when we're talking about textures. Now, I'm at about 45 minutes, and I'm going to try not to push this too long, but I think I'm probably going to get up to about 55 minutes total um, because I want to talk, lastly, before we go back and get ourselves a working window, I want to look at the handle event function that I have here. Um, so I'm going to drop this one last function in, and it's a long one, so I don't blame you if that makes you feel sick at first. But it's not as complicated as it looks. It's a big switch statement, so it's basically just a bunch of ifs. It's easy. So we're taking in a reference to an SDL event that we're calling E. E happens to have a type property on it. Um, that we're checking for called SDL window event. So basically what this does is when an event comes up, we only really want to handle it if it's a window event. We don't care about it if it's any other kind. It just simply doesn't matter to us because we're a window. We only need to think about window events. So we'll just filter out anything else. Doesn't matter if whatever, whatever else it could be. But if it's a window event, then we want to switch through um, the different event uh, types that this thing could be. E.window.event. So there are a whole bunch of different possibilities for what this could be. And they all sort of mean different things. Now, I've coded this up so that ideally, um, like most of the big stuff will just sort of automatically get handled here. So a big one is SDL window event size changed. So if the window's size gets changed by me doing something like this, this will detect that on a frame by frame basis, tell me about it, and that will let me readjust my height and width properties and readjust the renderer to tell it to render again with the new size. So that when I do this, whatever picture is being displayed in here automatically gets resized to the size of the window and it never like seems to break uh, break aspect ratio that sort of thing now repaint on exposure um, to be honest I'm not a hundred percent certain what this one accounts for I think exposure means literally when I click on it and it comes from behind another window I think that's what we're talking about here so mouse entered this is when the mouse crosses into the boundary of the window. Mouse event or uh, SDL window event leave. This is when the mouse crosses out. Window event focus gain. So this is for the keyboard. So this is when I click on it in here and it's now the focused window. Now, so if I had a different um, window that was active at the same time, um, like if I were to do here. If I do this, this window, our, our window here is still visible, but this is the one that's under focus, right? Like, so I have to be clicked on it um, and actually have it in focus. So that's focus gained and focus lost is, of course, whenever you click away from it for any reason. 
And then they have um, a last couple things for if the window gets minimized, then set it to minimized. If the window gets maximized, set minimized to false. I'm, yeah, right. Full screen and maximize are different things, so I'm not setting is full screen here. And if the window gets restored, then set minimize to whatever. So these are all the window events that I have chosen to put in here. And I put them in here basically just to show you all the different things that you might want to account for in a window class. You don't necessarily have to count for many of or possibly any of these things. But if you're producing a game that you want other people to play and use and feel like it's not a piece of crap, uh, you probably want to do some of this stuff. So um, just pull from this list. Again, this very same list shows up in Lazy Foo's, um Tutorial 35 on window events. So uh, if you want to look into it in more detail, I suggest you look there. Um, so we have most of the bits and pieces that we need in order to be able to do this thing at this point. So um, now this is all about trying to put together the portion of the application which actually starts up and does the dirty work. So I'm going to start by just sort of copying a chunk of stuff in from my main. Uh, and we'll look through that first before we go any further. So I'm including a whole bunch of stuff up top. Um, so I'm can, I'm holding on to IO stream so that I can use C out to print to the console when things go wrong. I'm using string stream because I like using string streams to format my errors. Unsurprisingly, I also need string. Um, SDL.h is obviously important for using any SDL functions. SDL.image, we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in there. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I need it for this particular example. And window.h is the last big one, which of course we need to include to have our window class, right? Like we need to bring that in. Just double checking, it seems like we have filled in all of our functions here and that window is more or less working. I've defined a bunch of constants here, so you saw that I did this in my assignment 1 solution. So I'm going to say that my window is called assignment 3. I've got a render width and height of 1600 by 900. I'm just doing that to make sure that I've got a window size that fits the normal like full HD aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Uh, and I'm going to say that my window is not minimized and not full screen to start. I have listed these functions up top here as declarations not definitions because I wanted to use them in my main here I'm gonna make all these functions below the main um, but so this gives you an idea of the kinds of functions that I'm going to have in my main application to start with and it's sort of in order of phase because start is okay when the application starts up do this stuff once we're done starting we might need to load some assets that we use in the application at that point, then we're going to be updating um, until the application stops at some point. You'll notice that update returns bool. So if update ever returns true, um, the application will break out and start to unload assets and stop. Of course, unload assets is the opposite of load assets and stop is like finally just close out everything that needs to close. Lastly, I have a window object is the only variable that I'm using here. So this is this is the one thing that I've got in this scene. And you'll notice, of course, that my main is sort of following through this. So we start up, load assets. While update isn't true, just keep going. So this while loop is do nothing. Just keep calling update over and over and over and over again until it returns true. And that will cause this to break. Then we unload assets, stop, and return zero to indicate that there's no errors. You may have noticed this and said, well, what the hell? Um, this is what a main looks like for a console application. Uh, this is a very old C style of doing things. So this int argc is the number of command line arguments and car star um, args array is the array of arguments passed in from the console. You will never need to use these for anything, you just need to know how to write them. SDL likes it this way, and I'll show you what it looks like when SDL doesn't like this, but you, you'll get the picture. Um, so I'm gonna try and go through uh, this reasonably quickly 
Um, so I'm going to throw in my start function. I'm just going to do this hole and I'm going to read through it quickly to sort of indicate what's going on. So this should look pretty familiar. Start looks a lot like our window init, right? Because we have a title, pixel width, pixel height, start minimized, start full screen, right? So unsurprisingly, window.init is getting called in here and all these things are getting passed to it. But before we get there, we need to initialize SDL. SDL init needs to be called to start SDL up. Just take it on faith that this is how you should write that. Um, basically what happens is that if for any reason this returns less than zero, that means something has gone wrong, which means that we need to print an error out. I've shown you this a couple of other times is what we did in window in init. Um, this kind of process happened uh, when things went wrong. So we make a message, we throw an exception if anything went wrong. Great, done. Next step, set texture filtering. Um, again, this is not super important. This is, um, this is not entirely necessary, but it's sort of a recommended step. Um, texture filtering is, um, relates to how you sample textures, uh, especially during resizing. Um, you'll note that I don't throw an exception if this doesn't work because it's not super important. It's really just we're trying to set a default here and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You could go without this and it would it would work fine. Um, window.init gets called at this point because SDL is up and running. So let's create a window and get that working. If that works, great, awesome. Later on in this tutorial, we're going to talk about setting up an MVP matrix to translate between physics and render coordinates, and that will go in here if that's where that you know if that's going to happen. Um, and then lastly, I want to be able to load .png files, and in order to do that, I need to um, start up SDL image. So that requires image init, and I have to pass image flags. So this is saying um, initialize SDL image and tell it that I'm interested in loading ping files and it will do that. Why this gross syntax? Ask Scott about flags. Point to this line and say what the hell and he'll probably tell you all about it. Of course, again, if this doesn't work, if this initialization fails for some reason, throw it out. In this case, we need to use IMG get error because this will get errors from the uh, the error list for SDL image instead of the SDL core. So realize that this this one is a tiny bit different. But start goes flows through this way uh, pretty cleanly. Uh, lucky us for this particular video, load assets is going to be completely empty. And let's just jump ahead quickly to unload assets, which is also completely empty. I'm going to throw stop in at the end, and then we're going to talk about update last. So stop is just there to make sure that anything that gets freed, or anything that needs to get freed, gets freed. Window, call dot free, just release your resources so that you're done. Um, tell SDL image to quit and release any resources it's holding. Tell SDL core to quit, release any resources it's holding. And if this all happens, we're good everything is out and uh, we can quit the application without anything weird going on. So the very last thing that we have to install here before I can run this and everything will work nicely is this update function. So all that's happening here is what we call an event loop. So you'll notice I have this SDL event E that I'm keeping track of here. Inside update, I run a while loop. What this thing does is each frame, it will count through the results of this SDL poll event. Now, poll event will pop the next event that is queued in SDL's sort of like message queuing system to see if anything has happened. These, these anythings that happen are recorded as events that we can determine like who did this and what or like what caused it and what kind of event it is. 
So what we're doing here is we're just counting through this and um, checking to see if it's zero. If poll event returns me zero, then that's it. Um, there's no events left over. And realize that this while loop is about counting through events. If this while loop breaks, all that happens is that we return this variable to say whether or not to quit. And our application then just calls update again to see if there's any more events and it just keeps going through and going through and handling events and handling events. That's all that's happening in here. So for each event that happens, um, we check a couple things. We check one specific thing is that if the event type is SDL quit, then we want to set quit. This is how we handle hitting the X button or if I go, I don't know, to like if I right click on this and go to close window or something like that, like all those things presumably would count as SDL quit events and we want to set quit to true so that when we return this, update returns true and we break our loop and end the application. But under any circumstance, we need to call window.handleEvent. So that's how we end up in here going through this list, checking over anything that is a window event to handle that and deal with it however we need to deal with it. So now we've come this far. I'm at exactly an hour, so I don't want to carry this on any further than I have already. So I'm just going to hit debug on this and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that I didn't destroy everything in here. Um, and sure enough, this doesn't look like an exciting result, but actually for like a first try, I'm pretty impressed. So that's pretty great. Uh, we rendered a black screen. Um, good for us. That's that's it. We got a window that appears and I can move it around and I can resize it and you know it's detecting focus of my mouse and detecting focus of my keyboard and even when I hit the X button it actually stops the application. Um, so uh, this is my take on a window class. This may be different from what Scott did um, and it's based pretty strongly upon this Lesson 35 Lazy Foo window events. So if you want to see sort of where some of my ideas came from, this is probably a good idea to sort of look into this. And this maybe will help you sort of step through what's going on here if this video didn't help you with that. So next time, we are going to be continuing on from here and trying to do some interesting things by adding textures that we can draw and um, getting into how to transform physics coordinates to render coordinates. Uh, it's some very cool stuff and um, it's like really, really powerful material that's going to uh, definitely, let you, definitely let you do a lot more cool stuff uh, in C++ to make games. All right, well, anyway, um, I guess that's it for this week and um, I'll see you next time.